Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout special report. Well, folks, she's back again, and this time she has another incredibly helpful book to help us learn how to thrive with autism. Rudy Simone, the author of 22 Things a Woman Must Know If She Loves a Man with Asperger's and Asperger's on the Job, has now finished her third book, and it's called Asperger Girls, Empowering Females with Asperger Syndrome, Jessica Kingsley is the publisher. Now many of you know Rudy is one of the pioneers of people on the spectrum that's leading and counseling us to living successfully with autism, but you might also be interested in knowing that Rudy is popular on both the autism speaker circuit and the music circuit, and what I'm hoping today is we have a little time left over where we can talk about that. But first, it's on to the big news. Rudy, welcome back to Autism Hangout. Hello, hello. I'm always excited to talk about your books, and this one is big as the ones that have come out before. Um, it's called Asperger Girls. Now, there's growing evidence everywhere that girls with Asperger's are underdiagnosed. So, what did your studies find? Well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it started when I was researching Asperger's on the job. I was finding that men and women were having the same problems with relationships, social relationships, romantic relationships, and employment relationships. But women had one more uh, hurdle to overcome, and that was to get their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, it's a little better. It's a lot better. I mean, I, the, the younger girls that I talked to tended to get their diagnosis pretty, pretty fairly easily. Um, but the older women didn't get it until 40s, 50s, and usually not until uh, one of their children were diagnosed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, you know, they would look to find the source and always look at the father first. And then by default, um, you know, it would, it would come to the mother. So not having a diagnosis uh, in itself means a lifetime of searching, wondering, and receiving um, the wrong diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I know that in your book, you have uh, a chart that you've put together that shows some of the difference between men with Asperger's syndrome and, and women with Asperger's syndrome. Can you care to talk about what some of those differences are and perhaps even what some of the biggest misunderstandings are? Okay, um, all right. First, I want to mention that um, people with Asperger's don't have a clear sense of gender identity. So uh, uh, the, the people in the spectrum listening might sort of recoil from that and say, oh, men, women, we're all the same. There shouldn't be gender differences, and, so, and, and I totally understand that. But it's not so much that AS presents differently in females as opposed to males. It's just that it is perceived differently. So we all know, for example, that um, men with AS like to wear comfortable clothes and they go thrift store shopping. Well, so do women. We tend to wear, we tend to dress like teenagers, wear sweats and hoodies, or have wash and wear hairstyles, not wear a lot of makeup. So that uh, can translate to either immaturity or a uh, lack of concern about her appearance, or it could be put down to, you know, depression, not caring about your appearance kind of thing. So, um, you see what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's not that it's presenting differently. It's just that society's perception of what a woman should be and do and act like is, mm -hmm. is different. People tend to be able to identify men with Asperger's perhaps a little bit more easily because women are better emulators um, we are better at mimicking social skills. I mean, I can perform. I can seem very socially adept. But if you spend more than 20 minutes with me in a social situation, then something immediately becomes obvious. But no one thinks Asperger's. Everyone thinks unfriendly, uh, a nervous, you know, neurotic, or whatever. They don't see what is going on behind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the facade, which is the sensory overload. It's trying to get along in an unscripted situation. I mean, this with you and I is scripted. In other words, I have a purpose for being here. So uh, we, you know, men and women with this, we're all about purpose mm -hmm. um, and meaning. Mm -hmm. So we have, this, we, we both struggle in social situations, but the difference is that women can fake it a little longer, mm -hmm. <laughs> which can work against us in some ways. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Now, Typical of all your books, I'm assuming that you did a considerable amount of research before you started to come out with some of these observations. Um, Asperger girls, how did you go about finding them to interview them, and how many did you talk to? 
Oh, okay. Um, I was writing, working with Asperger's, or Asperger's on the Job, as it is now called, and I was renovating my house, and I had Kinsey, I had rented Kinsey, and I loved his methods, and the, uh, the title for Asperger's came to me probably about two years ago, because I'm too lazy to say girls with Asperger's, so I was to say Asperger's. So the title was there, and then um, the seeds, you know, the wheels were turning, I knew this, this book had to be written, so Kinsey sort of inspired me to, to get more methodical, you know, to have, um, and I did that with Asperger's on the job as well, mm -hmm. but um, instead of interviewing, I think, 80 people like I did for that book, I interviewed fewer, I think it was about 35, but I interviewed them at, at length, in depth, like question, answer, question, answer, back and forth, back and forth, because I wanted to know, um, they want to know their stories, I wanted to know their experiences, and I wanted it to be um, a heartfelt and touching book. I wanted it, you know, for these women to really come to life for the reader. Mm -hmm. Well, as with uh, 22 Things and uh, Asperger's on the Job, do you consider Asperger's a handbook for how women on the spectrum can get along in society and do well? Well. I do, but I don't want that to sound pompous or anything. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's because of the generosity and participation of these brilliant um, diagnosed women mm -hmm. that I was able to compile um, this handbook. And then, of course, you know, I'm almost 46 years old, and I've been living with the syndrome for a long time, um, largely undiagnosed, and having to learn through trial and error what not to do. Um, you know, several careers later, several, you know, relationships and marriages later, I'm starting to get a handle on things, which is wonderful. But I did want to help um, people who, um, you know, are coming up after me and make it a little easier for them. Mm -hmm. Now that you spent a considerable time in this subject matter and you've interviewed these people at length, uh, can you come away with like a concluding statement? What, what conclusions and summaries did you draw from this work? Oh, okay. Um, gosh, that we are an incredible um, uh, subculture um, of people. We have a lot of skills. We have a lot of abilities. We have a lot of strengths. We have deficits that we need to work on. All these deficits are manageable. It's really just a question of getting the right information and the right tools and having su um, supportive help from loved ones uh, or employers or friends or whoever, um, I think is really crucial, too, to just um, make the difference between, you know, a life that's being fully lived and a life that's sort of more of a struggle. Well, Rudy, as with Asperger's on the Job, Asperger's is another book that if employers take the time to read, they can really see where this segment of the population is not only underemployed, they're very underappreciated because Asperger's can pretty much do anything from weld to hang drywall to write to paint. You know, it's, it's wishful thinking to think that employers will read it. I hope so. I mean, that would be fantastic. Without an obvious title like Asperger's on the job, I don't know, you know who would have that incentive. But what I want to do with all my books, and especially um, these last two, is give the person some positive encouragement and some positive tools and some scientific you know information that they can use i want to promote a cultural exchange you know to think that the world will change around us is a little idealistic mm -hmm. and to just throw up our hands in despair is too negative so it's really all about um, understanding and communication and that's why i'm writing so many books mm -hmm. i'm a little prolific at the moment well, your books are very encouraging, too. I, in fact, I, I just heard Future Horizons now in this coming upcoming season. Uh, Asperger's on the Job is the number one seller. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess for the uh, new crop of books, yeah, for 2010. It's coming out next month, I believe, uh, in May sometime. And last I heard, yeah, top seller. And I believe Asperger's is also doing really, really well. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Maybe sometime we can talk about your music career, too. But for today, where can people go to find more information out about Aspergirls? Um, well, you could go to JKP's website, jkp.com. Um, you could go to Amazon or to, I believe, Barnes & Noble and Borders. It's at all those sites. And it's, of course, at my website, which I know you're going to have across the, the screen, yeah. um, Help for Aspergirls. <laughs> Rudy, it's always a delight to talk to you. It's always a delight to see what you're doing. And it's, a, it's so inspirational, the amount of information you're putting out there to help us all learn how to thrive with autism. And I thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon, probably in another five minutes with another book from Rudy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Bye.